Hello everyone. Welcome to Listen to Lead a lecture series. Today we shall be discussing the kinds of proposal. The first kind of proposal is express proposal. When the offerer expressly communicates the offer, the offer is said to be an express offer. The express communication of the offer may be made by spoken word or a written word. Second, implied proposal. When the offer is not communicated expressly and an offer is implied from either the conduct of the parties or the circumstances of the case, then it is known as implied proposal. Both of these types of proposal has been discussed in the previous video. The third type of proposal we shall discuss is called specific proposal. It means that a proposal is made to a specific person or, or to a specific group of people. For example, A says to B, will you buy my watch for rupees 5000? Here the proposal is made to a specific person that is B. But in an example, if a store makes a proposal that additional 5% discount is to be given to the student of XYZ University. Since here the group is identified, therefore here it will be a specific proposal. Fourth, general proposal it means a proposal made to the public in general general offer or general proposal can be accepted by anyone it cannot be ascertained to whom it is made but the person who accept it must be ascertained for example a's dog is missing so a publishes an ad in a newspaper that whoever finds my dog will get 1 lakh rupees. This is a proposal which is made to world at large and anyone can accept it. It cannot be ascertained to whom it is made. Therefore, it is a general proposal. Now, general proposal is accepted by the performance of the terms of the proposal. So, in the above example, whoever finds the dog, that person, let's say X, by finding the dog, accepts the proposal. Therefore, he has accepted the proposal by his conduct. Conduct being him finding the dog. And when it is accepted, it will go on to become a contract. So, when X finds the dog of A, he is doing two things. First, he is accepting the proposal which was made by A and second, he is performing his part of the contract. Communication of acceptance is not necessary in the case of a general proposal. Here, the acceptance can be communicated by the conduct. This can be explained with the very famous case Carlyle versus Carbolic Smoke Ball. Here, a company had invented a medicine for influenza called the Carbolic Smoke Ball. The company issued an ad that company would pay £100 to any person who contracted influenza after using the carbolic smoke ball thrice a day for two weeks. The company also announced that they had, they had deposited £1000 with a bank to show the sincerity. Mrs. Carlyle took the smoke ball as per the direction and still got influenza. It was then held that it was an offer made by the company to the world at large which was to ripen into contract with anyone who comes forward and performs the condition. Therefore, the company was held liable. Let's discuss another case. Lancaster versus Walsh. Here, a person needed an information, so he made a proposal that, that a reward would be offered for information. And the information asked for reaches the offerer from several sources. It has been held that the person who gives the earliest information will be entitled to the reward. So here the proposal was a general proposal made to the world at large and when the person gave the information then the purpose was fulfilled. Once he receives the information then why would he keep distributing the reward? Therefore after the first information the proposal will come to an end. Then we shall discuss the case Harbhajan Lal versus Harcharan Lal. In this case, a young boy ran away from his father's house. The father issued a pamphlet that anyone who finds the boy will get rupees 500 as reward. Harbhajan Lal, who knew about the reward, found the boy and took him to the police station. He was held to be entitled for the reward. Now, after this case of Harbhajan Lal versus Harcharan Lal, a question arises. How is the facts or how is the case different from Lalman Shukla case or how are the two cases different from each other or why there were two different things held in both of the cases. So Lalman Shukla was different from Harbhajan Lal versus Harcharan Lal because in Lalman Shukla 
the servant here was first obeying the master's instruction and then after that when he had found the boy then he got to know about the proposal but in harbhajan lal versus harcharan lal the person knew about the reward and then he found the boy so whatever kind of proposal it may be it should be within the knowledge of the person so in harbhajan lal case the person knew about the reward therefore he had the knowledge of the proposal before performing the condition then we shall discuss the fifth kind of proposal that is the counter proposal no provision has been made directly under the indian contract act on counter proposal but a glimpse of it can be derived from section 7 clause 1 which says that acceptance must be absolute and unqualified so if the acceptance is conditional or not absolute then it does not amount to a valid acceptance rather it is a counter proposal so when a person makes a proposal to another and the other person modifies the terms of the proposal it will be known as counter proposal we can also that say that in reply to the proposal the person sends the proposal from his side as well the proposal made in reply is called counter proposal so for example the proposal to b to sell his goods for rupees Twenty thousand. B says that he will buy at rupees eighteen thousand. So when B says that he will buy the goods at eighteen thousand, this is a counter proposal. He modified the terms of the proposal made by A to make an agreement enforceable by law. There has to be an acceptance of the proposal. Proposal alone cannot become a contract. So the counter proposal made by B. has to be accepted by a to become a contract the effect of making a counter proposal is that it ends the original proposal so in the above example if a doesn't accept b's proposal and b now wants to buy a's goods at the price which a had mentioned that is 20000 rupees then he cannot do so a's proposal ended the moment b made a counter proposal so ultimately this can be narrowed down to an equation that counter proposal equals to rejection of proposal plus making of a fresh proposal in counter proposal agreement arises when the counter proposal is accepted by the other party then we shall come to the next type of proposal that is cross proposal cross proposal is always between the same parties same subject matter same terms and time of communication is same so that the proposal cross each other during communication that is both the parties make the proposal for the same thing at the same time so for example a sends a letter to b i want to sell my old car to you for a price of 3 lakh rupees will you buy this letter is sent by b on 1st january a proposing to buy a car at rupees 3 lakh rupees now proposal of a reaches b on 3rd january and proposal of b reaches a on 4th january the parties are the same. same the subject matter is the same and the terms of the sale are the same so both the proposals have been put in a way of communication that they cross each other these proposals are called cross proposal in another example if a makes a proposal to b for sale of horse and b makes a proposal to a for buying a cow then these are not called cross proposal these are two proposal from a and b to each other now the question arises if cross proposals make an agreement the answer is no proposals are not sufficient to make an agreement there may be a number of proposals but there has to be an acceptance since both the parties have made proposals and there is no acceptance therefore no promises made now the question arises that if the parties are the same the terms are the same the subject matter is same then why cannot the letter of one be treated as the acceptance of the other's proposal the answer is that without the knowledge of proposal they cannot be an acceptance the same was held in lalman shukla versus gorida so now the question arises that in case of cross proposal when can an agreement, agreement be said to, to arise agreement arises when there's an acceptance of the proposal another point that has to be noted is cross proposals do not end the proposal of each other the proposal of a and the proposal of b both and then comes the standing offer an offer when is allowed to remain open for acceptance over a period of time it is known as standing offer tender for supply of goods 
is a kind of a standing offer so for example when we ask the newspaper vendor to supply the newspaper daily in such a case we do not repeat our offer daily and the newspaper vendor supplies the newspaper to us daily the offers of such types are called standing off with this we have come to an end of this lecture stay tuned for the next one and don't forget to like share and subscribe